Welcome to the next video in the search for better health topic. This video will be looking at dot point 9.4.61, identify and describe the main features of epidemiology using lung cancer as an example. So let's start off by breaking down this word epidemiology and actually working out what it means. So we can break it down into two parts. The first part, epidemi or epidemic, refers to the widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time. And then just like all of the other ologies that we've looked at since Year 7 Science, it refers to the study of. So basically, epidemiology is the study of diseases, but it includes the study of both infectious and non-infectious diseases. And the main point of epidemiology is to determine the cause and the effect of different diseases in order to find out how people get sick and develop management plans to stop them from getting sick in the future. So epidemiology is the scientific study of patterns of occurrence of disease in human populations and the factors that affect these patterns. It describes, statistically analyzes and hypothesizes as to the cause of the disease in the population. Results are used by public health authorities to develop strategies to control disease and improve public health as well as evaluate those strategies that are already in place. So let's have a look at this flowchart that's in your booklet that you need to fill out. So there are a number of different types of epidemiological studies that we need to look at. So firstly, we have observational epidemiological studies that look at the outcomes of the risk factors examined. So basically, observational means we have a look at the population and try to determine what risk factors can be causing a particular disease or if there's an outbreak of, of a disease, what are the similarities between the different areas? So they can be descriptive, they can be analytical, where, so descriptive obviously means that they're just describing risk factors, analytical takes it a bit further. We could also have experimental epidemiological studies where this, those people carrying out the studies control the risk factors. So by limiting all other risk factors, we can determine whether one particular risk factor is the cause of the disease. And this can be carried out by randomized control trials. So we're going to have a look at those three types of epidemiological studies in a little bit more detail now. So as we said, there's three types, descriptive studies, analytical studies, and experimental epidemiology. So the descriptive studies are the first type of study that are completed. They help to provide information to those people carrying out the studies about the patterns of disease, including the frequency, so how, how often the disease occurs, which section of the population is affected, the geographical location, and whether it was over a particular time period. So a really good sort of pop, culture pop cultural modern example of this would be um, what took place in the movie Aaron Brockovich. So basically they were finding that people that were living in a particular area at a particular time were more susceptible to getting a particular form of cancer than um, other people in other areas and they linked that effect to the water. So the water was being contaminated and that was the cause of this disease. Next we have analytical studies. So this obviously involves a collection of more data which is then statistically analysed to help develop hypotheses as to be as to the most likely cause of the disease. So two things such as morbidity, which is the number of cases of the disease, and mortality, which is the, the percentage of the population that dies from the disease, are two indicators that are used to help them to identify or hypothesize the likely cause. Data about the incidence, which is the number of new cases, and the prevalence, which is the number of people affected in a population at any one time, are also compiled. So this is more numerical data. So quantitative data, whereas our descriptive studies are more qualitative data. We also have experimental epidemiology. So this is the study of the relationship between various factors that determine the frequency and distribution of diseases in the community. <coughs> Sorry about that. So this method employs prospective population experiments that are designed to test the hypotheses that have come forward from the other two types of studies and usually attempts to relate the suggested cause to the observed effect. So basic, 
sorry, basically they carry out an experiment on a population to see if by controlling certain risk factors, the number of diseases in the population either increases or decreases, and with the ultimate goal of uh, finding that cause. So we need to have a look at the different features of the epidemiological epidemiological studies, which is part of the, um, the syllabus dot point. So features of an epidemiological study include that they need to be conducted over long periods of time. So there's no point just looking at a group of people over a couple of weeks to see if more people in one particular group show more symptoms of a disease than another, because obviously a whole heap of um, external factors can come into play. So need to look at um, long periods of time. So in particular, when we look at lung cancer, we look at data dating back to the 1920s, early 1900s in Australia to see how changes have occurred due to, the, um, due to smoking as a cause of lung cancer. We need to study very large sample sizes. So we're looking at studying thousands of people Okay, so not just a, a small handful, a couple of people that live in your street to see whether there's a, a cause of a disease in your local environment. You need to be um, looking at massive sample sizes within the thousands at least. Uh, a collection of relevant data needs to be done from a large group of both affected and unaffected people. So our unaffected people are our case controls. So they're the ones that don't have the disease. So we need to look at the different data from both groups to see whether or not uh, the believed risk factor is actually the cause of the disease. So this relevant data could include things like age, sex, their diet, their occupation, their lifestyle, their exercise, where they work, etc. So we also need to have participants that represent a broad range of society and lifestyles. Again, there's no point just looking at all males or all females or all uh, males between the age of 18 and 25 or all. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're getting a broad view of the whole population. We also need to use control groups who are not exposed to the potential cause of the disease, but are similar in all other tests, sorry, similar in all other tests all other aspects, sorry, to the test group. And this is referred to as cohort studies. So as we can see in the image here, we have a group, the group of interest are those people who smoke and the comparison group are the non-smokers. So everything about these two groups would be the same. They'd be in the same age range. They'd be either made up of all males or all females. They'd be from the same particular location. They would have similar lifestyles, diets, etc. And what we would do is we'd follow those two cohorts over time and then we can compare the differences in the incidence of disease between the two groups to see whether or not uh, smoking is actually the risk factor that's causing that particular disease. We then need to collect data on things like incidence, which is the occurrence, or rate, the occurrence rate or frequency of a disease, as well as the prevalence, which is the number of cases of a disease present in a population at a given time. So we can see from this image here, uh, this analogy of the bathtub is quite quite good. So the prevalence, so the amount of water in the bathtub are all the people in a population that already have the disease. If we're adding more water to the bath, the, number, the amount of water in the bath is obviously increasing. So the incidence of disease is the frequency of the number of people who are contracting a disease, and that's adding to the prevalence of the disease in the community. We also need to gather data on mortality, which is the number of deaths due to the disease. And as we can see from our bathtub analogy, that when people die, that obviously increase, decreases sorry, the prevalence. So if we have more people dying from the disease than people contracting the disease, the prevalence will decrease. And we can also have a look at changes in uh, situations that have led to that decrease in the incidence, which leads to eventually a decrease in the prevalence. We also have morbidity, which is how often a disease occurs in a specific area. So looking at uh, population studies, percentages of people in one area compared to another that have a particular disease. Then the big thing that needs to happen is we need to statistically analyse the data to identify patterns and trends in the occurrence of the disease. So an epidemiological study is useless without statistical analysis of the information that is being gathered. 
From that, we can identify possible causes of the disease along with any risk factors by doing all of those other things, eliminating one risk factor and seeing how it has an impact on the population. From all this information then, we can't, you know, there's no point in just having all this information without doing anything with it. So developing a management plan with strategies to control or eliminate the disease to educate the public. And then lastly, we need to evaluate the effectiveness of the control and treatment programs. So in particular, the um, syllabus dot point says to use lung cancer as an example, which we'll be looking at uh, a bit more together in class. But with this idea here is um, over time collected data, uh, looking at the difference between smokers and non-smokers and the incidence and prevalence of lung cancer. Then obviously breaking that down and looking at particular risk factors such as age, sex and whether or not they smoke. Management plan to educate the population has obviously been a huge amount of um, education campaigns, advertising campaigns that we've seen around not smoking. In particular, the most common one being the introduction of um, the warning labels on cigarette packets. And then over time, uh, the government, the health authorities, etc., we'll see whether or not that's had an impact on the incidence of the disease, uh, which then obviously leads to our understanding of whether that uh, program is effective or not. Okay, so in class, we'll be carrying out the secondary source investigation where you need to gather, process and analyze information to identify the cause and effect relationship of smoking and lung cancer. We'll be having a look at uh, tables and graphs that show trends between men and women and uh, how many men and women smoke and then looking at how that leads to the incidence of lung cancer in men and women and lastly deaths from lung cancer between men and women. And there's some interesting statistics that come out of that investigation that shows us the difference between the two groups in society. And that leads us to the end of this video, so thank you for watching.